How's everybody feeling on this day? Hey Aisha, how are you today? How is everyone today? I'm um, gonna give it a moment. We're feeling up pretty fast. The first thing I want you guys to do here tonight is I want for you to like, share, gotta share. You gotta share this with somebody who you think really, really needs it. Share this video with someone who you want to help on their wellness journey. That's very, very important. So that's the first thing I want you to do. So click like and share this video with one of your loved ones or somebody, someone who you know needs to do better. They just need to do better. They need to upgrade their diets ASAP. And you know who they are. And they know that you know who they are. <laughs> so that's the first thing. So I'll be brief tonight, you guys. It is Thursday. And so happy Thursday to everybody. Hey, Brenda. Hey, Tashana. What's going on? Thanks for joining me once again tonight. I'm holding my phone. I don't have my tripod. It's upstairs somewhere. <laughs> Um, I'm so excited for this little item I got today. I have to show you guys um, this cute little thank you. Thank you. Hey, what's going on, Shannon Philly? So how many of you guys are in New York by a show of like thumbs and hearts? Okay, sweet. So y'all know I'm coming there for the Vegetarian Vision Expo next weekend, right? I will be there for the Vegetarian Vision Expo in New York next weekend. I'll be there on Saturday and Sunday, okay? So if you're going to be in New York, I want to see your face. Go ahead now and get your tickets online for the Vegetarian Vision Expo. I think my sister, Miss Munker, is here in the building. Hey, Queen. Shout out to her and the Munker family. I love them so much. They don't even know. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Oh, Talithi, that was you sending hearts, but you're in South Florida. <laughs> and South Carolina. Well, I'll be close to Charlotte, so that's coming up soon. Um, but I wanted to just chat with you guys tonight and talk about um, a little bit about how you can make this transition without starving yourself. And we'll, of course, get into that for our online workshop course. And we'll get into all the details, all the details about that. But tonight I want to talk a little bit about some of just the junk food traps. Because you want to eat well, you don't want to get caught up in the junk food traps. And it's so easy to do that. And that's why we're doing the electric food classes. So that you can just, not just go plant-based, but so that you can also avoid the junk food. Food traps. So some of those junk food traps, for example, uh, can you do me a favor, Justin? Yeah. If you go right upstairs, you know that thing that I use to set my phone on? Yeah. It's like black and blue. Yeah. Can you grab it for me? Yeah. Thank you. So some of the junk food traps that is easy to get into when you're going vegetarian, I know that sounds crazy. You're thinking junk food. If I'm vegetarian, I'm not eating junk food. You're absolutely going to run into some junk food food you want to be really really careful uh, one of the junk food traps is chips so of course you're gonna be looking for really quick things to grab you're gonna be looking for um, you know a healthier version of what you're used to and it may look that way on the surface yes sir but it's super easy to fall into a trap thank you and to um, end up with the same crap Sometimes worse. So you got to really, really be careful about this. All right. Um, number two is 
all of the sweets. All of the unhealthy sweet things on the market. It's very easy to run into that junk. <laughs> Uh, and that's a good one, Chiquita. And you know we're about to go there and talk about carbs. Carbs is one of the things that you'll certainly run into because you, when you give up meat, you start to just look for a filler of sorts, right? So you're looking for something that's going to give you that feeling, something's going to fill you up, something's going to give you that nice, comforting feeling. And that, that tends to happen um, pretty early on when you cross over. You're giving up the meats, and if you're not jumping to all the soy and all the alternatives and all that stuff, then you end up with the carbs. Hence the sweets, the cookies, the chips, all that stuff, right? Hold on, you guys. Let me get my tripod life together. Here we go. Hold on. Ooh. Yeah, we go. Ooh. Okay. Ah, I'm in there. Okay. Ah, all right. So, can you have ice cream? Yes. Um, are there going to be uh, some ice creams that are a little cleaner than others? Absolutely. Okay. Let me get myself. Ah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get this thing straight. Okay. There we go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chips, no good. So here's the thing. The carbs, the sweets, the junk, the labels. You've got to read labels, you guys. Don't get lazy about this, all right? This is your time. This is your time to be bougie with your food choices, all right? Label, label, labels. If the first ingredient is corn, potatoes, wheat, rice, you know, you really want to look for stuff like that because these are all, again, just, you know, uh, uh, canola, canola oils and corn oils and fructose and all this junk. You really want to study that label and make sure that you're getting something that's clean. The less ingredients, the better. All right, so it's really, really important. Um... So you want to look for, if you're going to eat, if you have to eat a chip, find a, um, like a black bean chip, somebody said, you know, um, a plantain chip, a blue corn chip, uh, you know, a quinoa chip, a lentil chip, something that's not, you know, a lot of fillers and things like that. Even a vegetable chip that's just a straight up vegetable, you know, they've got dehydrated okra, dehydrated green beans, dehydrated, you know, you've, you've got to really be on the, the, the seaweed chips and things like that. All right, uh, when it, uh, popcorn is never okay, okay? Uh, if you gotta eat some skinny popcorn, it's gonna be transitional, but corn is a no-no, and it is not on the electric food list. Almost all corn in America is GMO, and just straight up hybridized junk, okay? Uh, she said, that's a great question, isn't spelled a starch? So it's really important to understand, although um, spelt actually is a, um, a seed grain it's actually more of a seed spelt itself right but when you add all these other elements to it and you put it through a process you can end up with something that is more acidic or starchy so you have to be mindful of that spelt in and of itself is fine um, but once you start adding all the fillers and all these things to it it can become something else so for example most of the spelt breads on the market are gonna have three to five ingredients one of those ingredients is typically going to be yeast, all right? So, um, you know, that's the, the rising component, right? So you really want to be mindful of that. I have spelt bread, store-bought, um, maybe uh, literally once every two months or so. It's, it's not something that's a part of my dietary regimen. Rye bread or something like that may happen every once in a while. My husband's more into it because he feels like, you know, he he's, wants to keep his weight up or whatever. He's eating bread. Um, but it's, it's, it's not my thing. Now, I make it fresh at home. And I don't add, you know, the yeast. I don't have to, you know, add um, any of the fillers and things like that. And it's wonderful. So you can make fresh spelt, spelt bread, rye bread at home. And you don't have to worry about 
um, the starchy element. Um, let me go through some of these questions. Labels, yes. Okay, but yes, no corn. You order a case of Skinny Pop. Oh, no. Yeah, it says Skinny. They're real cute with that. But, uh, no. Um, corn, corn is a shadow of what corn originally was. And that's why it is not a part of the electric foods list. It is a sweet, starchy shadow of what it used to be. Um, now, Kamut Pasta. Um, Kamut Pasta actually has the least amount of gluten of all of the seed grains uh, next to quinoa and uh, and uh, amaranth okay um, so Kamut is really really good it's one of the cleanest seed grains you can find on the market um, the pasta version of it typically has maybe one or two extra ingredients if it's a really clean good Kamut pasta um, you'll be doing yourself, uh -oh. you'll be doing yourself a, a wonderful service to transfer, uh, to, to come out of the typical semolina, corn, rice, flour, wheat, pasta versions of whatever it is that you're eating currently to cross over into Kamut. It's one of the cleanest things that you can eat. Um, hey Brenda. Hey Belinda, hey Gigi. Uh, if the source is a local small farmer who doesn't use GMO seeds for the corn, no matter the source. Uh, no, um, I would never, I, I don't care what the circumstance, even if it's a small farmer. The thing is, corn actually is maize, a little bitty bitty uh, small size product called maize, M-A-I-Z-E was what corn was, was originally before big agriculture got involved and created this big sweet starchy thing today that we know is corn even if it's organic um, just because something's organic doesn't mean that it is non-hybrid or non-gmo or gene genetically modified at its core um, so there's really some uh, it, it can be really murky for example there's um, organic seedless watermelon or organic seedless grapes whereas Obviously, there's been a genetic manipulation here because there are no seeds in this darn thing, right? So it's unnatural. It has been modified from its original state. So it may say organic corn or organic watermelon or what have you, but this thing is still not in its natural state. And you'll learn all about this and more <laughs> when you sign up for the virtual class. As most of you guys know, we launched today. So the cart is open for you guys to get registered for the electric online class. I am taking students now. Get signed up because we'll be closing our group on Sunday night. So you definitely wanna jump on in and do that. You can go to thefreshtribe.com to learn more about our online course, thefreshtribe.com. I'm looking forward to working with students. This is something I've wanted to do for a very long time. We'll go over all of the foundational all of the uh, foundational research on hybrid foods. What is an electric food? What is the difference between a natural hybrid and an unnatural hybrid? We'll go over um, what, what is organic, what is GMO, and what, is, what it's not, okay? What is the crossbreed? What is uh, um, monocropping? We'll go into a lot of the background information about all of these foods and why certain foods are on or not on the electric food list. And then of course, we're gonna get down to what the hell you can actually eat, okay? Because <laughs> I know it feels a lot like, oh my God, this is what I can't eat and what I can't eat, but we're gonna get down to what you actually can eat, okay? I'm actually eating now. Mm, get y'all up close on this goodness. Ah! Okay, 